Vice President Kamala Harris faces a big diplomatic test during her trip to Poland, especially since the United States just nixed the Polish plan to send fighter jets to Ukraine. And she was asked about that today during her joint news conference with the president of Poland. But she seemed to dodge the question. What kind of alternative plans does the United States have uh, to get materials to help Ukraine defend itself, uh, especially now that you have declined Poland's offer on jets? I want to be very clear. The United States and Poland are united in what we have done and are prepared to do to help Ukraine and the people of Ukraine. Full stop. Well, they've not been united when Poland came out with a totally different plan than rebuffed by the White House. But I want to take us down a brief walk down memory lane. Listen to the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, asked about this on Sunday. If, for instance, the Polish government, a NATO member, wants to send fighter jets, does that get a green light from the U.S., or are you afraid that that will escalate tension? No, that, that, that gets a green light. Leslie, what changed between Sunday and Tuesday? I think the Pentagon made a phone call, quite frankly, and our NATO allies, because remember, the United States is not the only one who said, we do not want to transport into that, uh, into that airspace, because uh, Putin, uh, Russia, and, and uh, quite frankly, that would give Putin, if you think about it, some of the ammo to his false rhetoric and to his uh, negative and lies propaganda that he's telling his people, and he's telling these very 18-year-olds and younger uh, that are going into uh, Ukraine. It would justify these lies. Uh, and this could be very, very dangerous when you look at again not tenable because of the way it would be transported into the airspace and then again ukraine's uh, air force is very strong right now that the air force has not been hit uh, as badly as other segments of their military uh, not saying that we're not going to send more and one more thing i agree with what harris said earlier is you don't show them your your cards uh, you know you can have some intelligence but you don't say this is what we're going to do and we're not going to do and i think uh, that the vice president was doing just that because there's a lot going on with our allies poland included uh, I would imagine forthcoming that we the people aren't aware of as of yet. Well, that transfer of the MiGs would have also given literal ammo, ammo to the Ukrainians who say that they need this. But Jason Chaffetz, I want to move on to a, another takeaway from the vice president's trip. Uh, listen to this interesting nuance and the difference in which she talks about war crimes um, from the Polish president. Let's take a listen. The UN has set up a process by which there will be a review and investigations. It is obvious to us that in Ukraine, Russians are committing war crimes. They also have those proofs on their smartphones. So Harris says it could be a violation, Jason Chaffetz. The Polish president saying in no uncertain terms, these not are this war Harris. crimes. Not this not Harris. Not this Harris. Different Harris. <laughs> the vice president but Harris. Jason, I want my name back. Yes, yes. Jason, look at this. <laughs> this is a war crime. This is a maternity hospital that was deliberately targeted. We don't need a UN investigation to tell us that we're looking at a war crime. This is a war crime. Why can't we have that moment from the Biden administration where they come out and say it in no uncertain terms? Just call it out. Call it like it is. And you're Amen. looking at the pictures. You have the evidence that it's there. Just just call it and say it what it is. Look, we want and need the vice president of the United States to do well, especially when she's overseas. But quite frankly, she is just not very good at this. She's trying to memorize some line from some briefing paper to say that the U.N. is going to come up with some commission. You couple that with her cackling and the way that she mm. laughs off some very serious things about refugees. And it's just a total embarrassment. Right, there were no deliverables, notably, in her trip, but she did deliver this moment, Harris. Let's watch. Is the United States willing to make a specific allocation for Ukrainian refugees? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a friend in need is a friend in need. <laughs> <laughs> Odd timing, Harris. So sad. Yeah. You know, if you let that play out a little bit, you see uh, the Polish leader put his hand up, you know, mommy style, where we give you the, the child a look yes. like, girl, you got to stop. Like he was trying to keep her from laughing more. And then he said through the translator, the serious point I was trying to get you to see. Oh, he schooled our vice president. Like, can you dial it back and be serious in this moment? 
It is so uncomfortable to watch someone, and I've said it before, who comes to school without studying. She is, she is a talented litigator. You lived in her state. You know, as Attorney General of California, she's got some gifts. But my goodness, what happened? Why do we have so many gaps, more gaps than yeah. gifts? And I am now quoting Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana. Got the gifts, got the gaps. One outweighs the other right now. So the big question for Joe Biden is, as the president of the United States, why did you send her? Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And meanwhile, the Ukrainian former press secretary saying it would be a tragedy if this woman won the presidency based on that moment, she said. Emily, the question seared in my mind is this, and it's one Politico pointed out. This was more than a year ago. It was after Kamala Harris first came in as vice president. Um, they said, compared to the current occupant of the Oval Office, Harris comes to the vice president's job as a neophyte on foreign policy. I would note that the guy in the Oval Office has been wrong on every foreign policy decision <laughs> for the last four decades, according to Gates. But moving on, Harris has also had weekly lunches with Secretary of State Antony Blinken, a veteran foreign policy and national security official. It goes on to make the point uh, that essentially she comes in with no experience. She's having these lunches with Blinken. I don't want the person having lunches with Blinken going to stop World War III. I'd like maybe Blinken to go himself, the person she's apparently learning from. That's right. I thought, I thought you were so generous in your last comment right there <laughs> about her because, frankly, I'm sick of being absolutely embarrassed by her behavior and absolutely mortified by the lack of experience, the, the inability to articulate with any modicum of seriousness to rise to the occasion as people are watching a country being decimated to have some semblance of professionalism befitting the office that she holds. I am so tired of everything that she does on the public stage. And I have to point out, for her reservations here for some reason about what she, what we all see as war crimes, at a minimum, horrible atrocities, how is it that when she watched the United States Border Patrol using whips in, a, in an acceptable policy method per their protocol to help herd that, or whatever it was, that she called that Horrible, deeply troubling. There needs to be consequences and accountability, and that human beings should not be treated that way. Why doesn't she have that same fervor to the pregnant women, to the children, to the youth, to the infirm, to everyone in Ukraine whose pictures are undeniable? She just saw one video and made that, that strong assessment. Why can't she come out with the same strength of force and say human beings should not be treated this way, not on the United States watch, not on our global watch? I, I think, and, and, and just to say this, I mean, the White House and the Vice President used the word whips. These were reins. And, and we know that they elevated that moment politically, whether they intended to or not, so deficiently that it, it already tore apart a country that was, was being torn apart over the border issues. But I think the answer to your question lies in what Jason Chaffetz was saying. She has been given some talking points and some things to say. And that's what she's doing. She has carried the message to Poland next to her handbag. And she walks in, she's got a bag and some notes. And it's, it's sad because it, it takes a, a type of presence. You don't have to have served, but you have to be curious enough to know that your decisions, what you say next to a guy who's willing now potentially to unleash chem weapons. We knew what Trump would do. Mm -hmm. I, I saw the USS Monterey when it came back. Mm -hmm. That all-women crew came back and, and hit Syria yeah. with those missiles after Syria unleashed, after Bashar al-Assad unleashed chem weapons. And who was his partner in all that? Vladimir Putin, mm -hmm. Russia. So we got to take him at his word. He's evil. What we're living through right now was propaganda three Thursdays ago. Yeah. So if he says he might do it, why don't we take it seriously and send somebody seriously curious enough to be ready for that moment? I will say at least she did not attempt to speak with a Polish accent, as we saw her do with a oh. French accent in France. Um, you can't even make that up. I no, mean, you can't make that up. Don't take that off the table because it might still happen. It, right. I'm not, I have zero expectations or hope I, again for her professionalism. We'll see. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.